welcome back. It's nice to see you again. In today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to get this Doctor Strange style particle effect. Now, this is gonna be a good introduction for anybody that wants to learn how to use particle emitters and particle effects in Apple Motion. If you haven't already seen my finished Doctor Strange video, make sure to check that out, link in the description. Also, as always, the project file from today's video is going to be available as a free download, just right below that like button. But today I'm introducing my Patreon. So if you would like to have access to the finished project files I've got from working on this full Doctor Strange video, so you can pull it apart and see the settings that I use to get my finished effects, that is going to be the reward for my first ever Patreon tier. Now, if you want to support me and you want to do it early, make sure you jump in there to that early bird tier. You're going to get a discount pricing, limited spacing. All right, let's jump into it. All right, this is the final effect we're going to be building. I'm going to assume that you don't have any experience with particle effects or particle effects in Apple Motion. If that's not the case, you can use the chapter markers to jump ahead. All right, here in Apple Motion, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to 60 frames per second. Normally I don't care, but because things are moving fast, sometimes I saw some artifacting and changing the frame rate to something a little higher helped. The next thing is the duration. Also, usually the, this doesn't matter, but in this case, you're probably matching it to a real clip. And so you just want this to match to whatever clip that you're going to be overlaying your particle effects on. And with those set, we're gonna go ahead and create our project. Now for our particle effects, we're gonna make sparks flying out. And so we need something to act as the base for our sparks. In this case, we're just going to click the shape tool and we're just going to draw a circle. Now the circle is going to be our basic spark. If we come over here to the inspector and properties, we're going to reset this to the center. It just makes it easier to work with. And then we're going to come back over here to the shape tab. And in the shape tab, we're going to change the geometry and the style. So first things first, we don't really actually want a solid fill color. We want a gradient fill color. And the second thing is we don't really want this linear gradient. You can see it just kind of goes top to bottom on the circle. What we want is it to come out from the center. So it's kind of got a hot white center and then it glows on the outside edge. So I'm going to change it to a radial gradient. Now it doesn't look like anything's changed and that's because if we come over here to the geometry, you can see it starts off center. So what we're going to do is we're just going to reset this to be a centered gradient by changing the start point to zero. There we go. We have a radial gradient in the center of our circle. I'm going to dial this down a little bit so that the edge of the gradient goes to the edge of our tiny circle that we're going to make. And then I'm just going to change the radius back down to something around 25. Now that this is looking right, we're going to select these colors and we're going to change both of them to be warmer colors. So the center is a yellowish orange that's closer to white because uh, it is the white hot center of our ember. And then the outer ring is going to be just a little bit darker yellow or orange because that is the part where the ember is uh, giving off the heat a little bit. It's losing a little bit and it just dies down the whiteness and turns it into sort of an orangey color. Now that we have a good looking single spark, the next thing that we want to do is come up here and click make particles and that will turn it into a particle effect. You can see if we play, they just sort of lazily drift out of the center, which is not what we want. We want them to spray out of this particle emitter like it has some sort of velocity to it. That's pretty easy to achieve. The first thing that we want to do is fix them lazily drifting out. Now that problem is because of the emission range. So you can see if I turn this down, that makes it so that it shoots in a straight line. This zero degrees is just the amount of variation you have in degrees that they can come spraying out at. So zero is a perfectly straight line. If I dial it up a little bit, we get something that actually looks kind of close to what we want, which is just like a little bit of spray on the angle, a little bit of variety. Now, the next problem that we have is that they don't fly out very far, and that's because the speed is really low. So if I crank up this speed and then hit play, you can see that we already get something that looks closer. But in our case, these are sparks. They're flying off of a fast moving circle. We want these to actually come out decently fast. Now, I'm just gonna keep cranking this up. I really want these particles to fly fast. As you're doing this, remember, this is art, not science. So we're gonna be tuning these numbers the entire time Really the goal is to make it look good and make it look real, not to be scientifically, provably, calculably real. So I think this is pretty good. I think this looks like uh, sparks flying out. The only problem is, is they're kind of blobby. They're just circles. 
So we're gonna introduce uh, some scale randomness and we're gonna reduce the overall scale. And by reducing the scale, it already looks better, but by adding some randomness, it really looks like it has some depth to it. Now this randomness is plus and minus 8%, so 12% to 28% is what we've got. And that seems to be a good amount of variety and it feels like little sparks coming out. Now that we have particles that look decently realistic, we want to make them spin around in a circle the way that Doctor Strange's portal does. Now if we select the emitter and then go over to the emitter's properties, we're going to move the anchor point and introduce an offset from the center. So if I just drag this X value, you can see that it moves the particles from one side to the other relative to the center point. And the reason why we're using this anchor point instead of X is because if we use the anchor point, we can then introduce rotation and it will spin around the anchor point because that is where it is anchored. If you wanted to, you could keyframe this spinning effect but for our use case, we actually want it to just spin consistently the entire duration of the effect. So I'm just going to click on the drop down and pick the rate parameter behavior. And this just describes how many degrees we want this to spin continuously over time. So I'm going to pick something that feels good. 544 feels like it's spinning decently fast. But without more particles, it's kind of actually hard to see what's going on here. So let's jump back over to our emitter and let's just increase the birth rate so you can really see what's happening. So if I dial up this birth rate, that's how fast the particles are born. You can see it's a spiral that just evenly spreads out from the center because we have a consistent speed and they're being pushed away from the center with the angle of our emission. So what we're going to do is we're going to change that up a little bit and make it look a little bit more sprayed. So if I introduce some speed randomness, you can see that that actually starts to separate these bands that we have, which is pretty good. But we also want to introduce some birth randomness and so that'll make it so it's not just a consistent steady line. So now we have a little bit of a wider line as it goes out over time and we have a little bit of separation in the line and that actually really increases the realism, makes it feel like it's spinning around and just being thrown randomly all over the screen. The one thing that doesn't look really realistic though is that it's coming from a single point. So I can come up here and I can click point and change this to circle and you can see it just completely ruins everything. So if you ever run into problems, you can just come in here and uncheck the rate and that will help you sort of debug what's happening. So in our case, you can see, uh, if we just play it back, that it looks like it's all spraying towards the screen now from the center. And the way that you fix this is you just come over here and you check the 3D box. Now the 3D box makes it pretty obvious immediately that it's now spraying from a circle in the direction that we wanted. And we can tune the size of that circle so that it's just a little bit bigger than the point. It makes it feel like it has some substance. Now, you might be a little bit concerned now that we've introduced 3D that maybe you didn't want this, you wanted a 2D effect. Well, in this case, so we have local 3D, which is more or less fake 3D, it stays very 2D. Um, and that's the default because it's faster. And for this effect, we're actually gonna stick with this. In my final render, I went back and forth between them because for some of the shots, I actually needed to composite things in the middle of the circle and it was sort of tilted on an angle. And so in those cases, I switched to global 3D and took the performance hit, but it made it look more realistic. Now, the other thing that we wanna change now that we have it spinning is we actually wanna change the angle that it's spraying out. So the way that it is now, it's kind of like you have a bag of beans attached to a rope and you're spinning and they just spray perfectly out from the center because that's where their momentum is coming from. That's not exactly what we want. If we turned the angle of it so that instead of spraying out like this, it was spraying down, that would be like the equivalent of a rocket ship on a string where the propulsion is spraying at the bottom and that's pushing it around the circle. What we want is this steel wool effect where it's actually spinning and throwing the particles. Now this is something that took me a while to wrap my head around, but what happens is it actually follows the momentum of the circle. And so you actually want to make it so that this is pointing in the direction that it's spinning. And that will make it feel like it is continuing the momentum of this imaginary steel wool on fire uh, flinging in the direction that it's going. And so with that, you actually start to notice pretty quickly that this feels like it's actually throwing the particles forward with the momentum of the circle as it's running around, rather than leaving particles behind or just spewing them out from the center. 
Now that we have the velocity feeling good, let's fix another subtle problem. Now if I turn down the life so you can actually see when these particles die, and then I play it back, you should notice that as the particles die, they just disappear, they just vanish. Which isn't really what happens in real life. In real life, as you have an ember flying out, it sort of loses its heat, and it fades out, it flickers out, and it dies. So this is something that's pretty easy to fix. Over the life of a particle, we have a lot of options that we can change to make it look differently as it ages. So let's turn back up the life and the randomness here to make it look more or less the way it did before. We're gonna come down here and I can pick original, which is what we've got. You can make it change color over time, or we can make it pick from a random color range. What we want is we already have it colored. We actually just want it to lose opacity over time. So I'm gonna expand this I'm gonna click on this little slider here and I'm gonna introduce a couple control points. Now with this last control point selected, I'm gonna turn its opacity down to zero. So that will make it so at the end of a particle's life, it will slowly fade out. So if I turn this life back down really quick so you can see, you should be able to notice that as these particles are dying, rather than just disappearing, they slowly fade and disappear. It's subtle, but it makes a big difference into making it feel like they're actually real embers and that they are disappearing in a natural way and not just vanishing in a 3D VFX sort of way. The other thing that happens with embers over time is that they slowly shrink. So I'm just gonna come up here and I'm going to choose the behavior and scale over life, making sure that's applied to my circle, not the emitter. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the birth uh, scale 100%, which is the, just the size that we picked in the previous panel. And then I'm gonna make the scale at death 50%. And so that'll make it so as these particles fly out, they slowly shrink down to half their size. Now, if you wanted to control how this happens, so maybe you want it, they shrink at the very end and rather than consistently over time, you can. But for this effect, I think it actually works well enough. Now, because they're shrinking, I'm also gonna increase the size a little bit just to make it so they don't disappear quite so fast. And I think that we have something that actually feels pretty natural. It feels like they're flying out, they lose their heat, and then they slowly just burn out and die. The next thing that feels like it's missing is gravity. These are just floating in 2D space. So if I select the circle here, which is our particle cell, and I come up here to behaviors, simulation, and gravity, it doesn't look like anything happens. In fact, like gravity barely does anything at all by default. So again, this is not science, this is art. So we're going to crank up the acceleration of gravity. I'm even gonna take this beyond what the slider normally does because I really want these things to fall. And you can see we actually start to get something that feels like they're throwing out and they get caught in the wind or the air and it just slows them down. Gravity pulls them to the ground. It feels really realistic and natural. Now the other thing that we want is the particles after they bounce off the ground, we want them to sort of stick around and we can do this in Apple Motion by using simulations and coming over here and picking the edge collision. Now unfortunately edge collision just sort of draws a box uh, around our object and that's what it collides on. So not terribly precise, luckily for us with our effect, this is all we need. Uh, and it defaults to the size of the screen, which works out nicely. But if we play it back, the new problem is that it just bounces everywhere. So we're just gonna dial this down to get something that feels more realistic, like the sparks are bouncing along the ground. And you can see that for our case, this actually feels pretty natural and pretty realistic. If you would like, you can turn off the bouncing on the left, right, and top of the screen so that they only bounce on the bottom. And I think that that helps sell the effect as well. And if you're compositing this into a 3D scene, you can actually change the position with uh, the width and the height sliders so that it lines up with your actual ground plane in your clip. All right, we've got motion, we've got physics, we've got color changes. Now the next thing that we need to do is crank up the resolution. We've been playing on easy mode. Turning up the birth rate is something that I always save till the end, and you absolutely have to do it at some point. It just slows down your computer so much to start cranking up the birth rate and getting potentially millions of particles in your scene that I save this for the very end. All right, so now that we have something that is higher resolution and we can see these spinning around, you'll notice that there's actually gaps in the circle. And if you pay close attention to the effect in the movie, it actually looks like there's multiple particle emitters spinning in a circle. 
And your thought might be, okay, well I can just clone the layer, but it doesn't work. Like if we clone this layer and look at it, it has a weird spin effect. And what we'd have to do is apply a rate to this going the opposite direction to counteract it. It's just a mess. We don't want to deal with that. And luckily for us, duplicating the layer instead of cloning it to create additional particle emitters is actually good because now we can add some variety. We can make them change colors in different ways and spin and fly in different ways and it just adds flavor. So what I want to do is I want to make it so about a third of the way through the circle, I'm going to introduce a new particle emitter and I'm going to do this twice so that we basically have three emitters flying more or less evenly spaced apart from each other. So I'm just going to duplicate it and I'm going to do the same thing again, get something synced up more or less another third of the way through the circle. It doesn't have to be precise. Again, this is to look, this isn't for science, there is no science to magic portals. And I think that that looks pretty close. You can see there's a little bit of unevenness in the spacing, but in my case, I think it even helps sell the effect that this was generated by a person and not a machine. So I'm gonna leave it like this. The one thing that's not immediate obvious about this approach that we've taken is that all three emitters are doing exactly the same thing just a few seconds apart. And it actually feels repetitive. I've noticed if you watch it over and over again. So if we just select the emitter and scroll down to the bottom, we can re-roll the randomness so that they all are basing their random values off of a different random number. And that makes it so that they feel like they're different. It feels like they have some variety. But you know, if you wanted to take it a step farther, this is what I was talking about before, maybe one of these emitters sprays faster than the other ones. And maybe one of them has a different birth rate or a different lifespan so the particles live longer. Or maybe they're smaller. Whatever it is, you can add a lot of flavor. And I think just even a few tweaks to speed goes a long way to making it feel like there's variety and there's randomness happening. It feels more alive. Now finally we're going to add a couple things that really make this feel glowy and like it's on fire, like it's alive. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do something that I used only in the thumbnail, but I think uh, could work well in the actual effect as well, depending on your scene. Uh, and that is to add a circle to the middle and we're actually just going to burn a solid circle into the portal so that it's more defined. So I've laid down a circle, it wasn't perfectly centered, it wasn't filling the timeline, so we gotta fix both of those things. Um, and now that I've got my circle lined up the way I want, I can come back over here to the shape and I can turn off the fill and turn on the outline. Now I don't want white, I want something that's, you know, maybe a yellowish white. I want it to match whatever color my particles are. And that feels more or less correct. I want it to be sort of this hot burning center and then I'm gonna increase the width there, and that's more or less the width that I want. Now this doesn't look great, and that's because it's not burning yet, it's just a static circle. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to introduce a couple filters that will make it feel like these particles are running along the circle and they sort of cut this circle into reality. So I'm gonna come up here to filters, and I'm gonna add a neon. This is uh, sort of new, so if you're on a really old version of Final Cut, you won't see this, you'll need to update. But this neon filter lets us add brightness and glow. And that's something that, okay, yeah, you can see this feels like the edge of a portal. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is click on my emitters uh, and I'm gonna add bloom. Remember to add this to the emitter, not to the particle cell. It won't work on the particle cell. And the uh, bloom is awesome because you can increase the amount and brightness. Now the amount you wanna be a little careful with, it turns it red pretty quick. Um, but this is something that you could animate. So maybe it starts out really bloomy at the beginning and loses some of its bloom over time. And the fun thing is, is because we have all three emitters separate, we can actually tweak the bloom parameters separately. And so they all feel a little bit different. They feel a little unique and it feels like there's more natural chance to how these particles are, are flaring out. Like they really are on fire. Maybe they're not all burning at the exact same rate. So something you'll hear animators say over and over and over again, it's about telling a story, it's not about being technically correct. And so with that, I think you will agree that feels like a Doctor Strange portal if we play it back. The problem that it has though is that the circle is just always there and we want the circle to appear uh, with the particles. And so what I'm going to take advantage of is something called the right on effect and you can use this with any shape, um, but it basically just draws around the border. 
Now if we play this back, you'll notice a problem, and that's that it's really slow and it's going the wrong direction. Um, luckily, both of those things are really easy to fix. If we go to the actual behavior, we can just reverse the direction, uh, and then we just need to change where it draws on from. And so I, I want it to sort of meet up with the beginning of the circle. So all of the particles sort of start from this right edge, and they start spinning around, and I want this to do the same. Uh, now that uh, that was wrong. Uh, let's readjust that so that the beginning of the line and not the end of the line there starts. Okay, perfect. It's starting from the same place as the particles, which is great. Um, but I actually want the particles to run a couple laps and then for it to write on. So I'm just going to fast forward a little bit. and I'm going to move this right on to be in line with, you know, a couple laps into the particle effect. Now, if I want this to run faster, it's as simple as just dragging the end of the write on effect. Uh, from the end of the timeline closer to the beginning of the clip. So you can see if I press play, they spin and then it eventually carves out this circle, uh, this glowing circle in space. I'm gonna add one more effect to this circle to make it feel more alive. So if we come up here to this filter and we're gonna add some distortion to it. I like the underwater, it has sort of a waviness. Now in our case, this is way too much. Um, I found that something around the one mark for the size of the waves. And then changing the refraction to be something really small, like just, you know, in the 10 or so range, makes it feel like it has a little wobble, like like it's hot and it's moving, maybe a little lava-like, but, uh, but not so crazy that it feels like it's just going out of control. And the great thing is, is that if we want to change when this appears on screen, we can just slide around the right on effect. This is one of the things that's really awesome about motion is that you can just introduce these behaviors and move them around the timeline wherever you want. And now as your reward for sticking around to the very end of the video, I'm going to give you the secret sauce to making all of this feel totally realistic. If we come up here to the top right and we go to render, we're going to turn on motion blur. Now motion blow, you can see, immediately makes these feel like sparks flying through the air. They have this streaky behavior. If we come up here to the project, I like to turn up the resolution, the number of samples in our motion blur. So I think 12 samples gets you a nice smooth motion blur, but like it just immediately makes it feel real. And the reason why we didn't turn this on earlier is it is really slow to compute. And so it will really slow down your computer. And so to me, it's a lot more natural and it's a lot easier to envision what's going on if you build up the motion of the particle effects first and then apply the glows and the blurs and things later that are gonna slow down your computer. All right, and with that, we have a finished particle effect. As I mentioned at the beginning, you can download the finished version of this project file for free, just down below in the description. But if you want to support me further and get access to more behind the scenes content, including all of the working files from my finished Doctor Strange video and how I did all of the particle effects, you can poke at the project files or do whatever you want with them, that's over on my Patreon. I'd really appreciate your support. For those that are new, make sure to like and subscribe. Your support really does mean the world to me. And let me know in the comments below if there is a effect, a transition, a title, something from a movie or a TV show or from another YouTuber that you wanna know how to do. And I'll make sure to make that video for you showing you how to do it in Final Cut and Apple Motion. All right, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.